Welcome to the Solid KM University channel. This video's topic is thread milling. So thread milling is the same sort of workflow as drilling, except obviously we're using a thread mill. So let's take a look at that and, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna go to add milling operation, thread milling. The workflow is generally the same. Obviously the thread mill is gonna do a different motion. It's not gonna just move in the Z direction like it would with drilling, but the geometry selection is the same. You start by choosing a drill point. So you can actually choose a vertice, a sketch point, the cylindrical wall of a pocket like this one here, or you could choose the edge there, similar to what you would do in, in drilling. So nothing new here. Click the green check mark. Let's go to tool. And a thread milling tool is defined slightly different uh, than, than standard tools. You have the ability to give it a cutting diameter, you give it a number of teeth, so this will dictate how much of the path actually needs to be generated. If there's more teeth, there's less path. If it's a single tooth thread mill, then you're gonna see the entire movement of the tool. Um, but generally, that's what it is. So it's just number of flutes, number of teeth, cutting diameter, and because it is doing a thread, you have the thread tables to choose from. You choose whichever one is appropriate for the thread that you're milling. So let's say, for instance, we're going to do this first one. So I'll just choose tool one. Now you have the option of using a shape tool if you like. That actually affects your solid verify so you actually see some threading pop up, but it's not entirely required. If you were to look at this thing as, a, uh, as just a standard tool that gets created, let's say we just choose one of these real quick, it will just look like just like that just that cutting surface, just so that it engages the material in the way that, uh, that you need to, to generate the toolpath. But there's nothing about this that actually requires the look of a thread. Okay, so let's just go with tool one. Levels, you have an upper level, and I'm just gonna dictate it by the top of the target. Thread depth, again, just similar to what you would do with either drilling or pretty much any other toolpath. I'm just gonna say, I'd like this toolpath to go all the way down, let's say to the bottom of the part here. And I'm gonna poke through the bottom by an additional four millimeter. Now, you could di dictate it by the number of threads if that is uh, how you like to control it. But again, it's the same sort of thing. In the level section, you're just telling it how deep into the part you'd like it to go. Under technology is where you actually see the main parameters of this toolpath. So, much the same as the drilling toolpath, you can tell it how to sort the drill points. Now, in this case, we only have one. So this, this section doesn't uh, matter here. Um, if your tool, your thread mill, is able to do some roughing, then you can add a roughing, and you can add a wall offset. You can add clear offset for a radial step over. In this case, though, we're just going to go right to doing the thread. So we have finish, and we can tell it number of passes we'd like to, to take. So this could be a spring pass. This could just be a cleanup pass. Again, just literally repeating the toolpath how many times. Start angle refers to the fact that when this toolpath is generated, there will be a zero degree position and you just tell it where along the part you might wanna actually start the toolpath. So we'll see that once we generate this toolpath. Otherwise, under thread data is mainly what we're here for, to do thread milling. So uh, this will be an internal thread. The internal thread will, will be a major diameter of 64 millimeters. We'll do this as a right-handed thread, and I'm gonna say to start from the top going to the bottom, only because I guess, because this is deep, I might wanna start at the top going down. Under link, you have the, the ability to control uh, for an internal thread. You can start from the center and then do a normal lead in, or you can turn that off and just have an arc in and arc out. But for internal, I'm gonna leave it like that. We'll do the same and calculate. And let's get a top view of this part. So it's starting at the center. It does a linear lead in, then it does the arc in, and you can see that it kind of spirals its way down. Now, there's not so much of a spiral there only because I have four teeth on there. Let me just go back to my tool here. So I have number of teeth, four. So because of that, it controls how how much that, that spiral goes down. That's generating the toolpath, obviously, as it goes down, it's generating the thread. Because there's four teeth, it doesn't need to take as big of a step. Let's do the same thing for the outside. Okay, again, I could use the same drill point because they're all concentric. This time, I'll switch to my other thread tool. 
levels. This time, I'm going to go only to the top face here. Technology. So I want this to understand that it is an external thread. The thread, let's say, is 86 millimeters. It is a right-hand thread, and we're going from the top. So that will generate climb milling, and all the parameters are the same. Because this is external thread, it's actually going to give me a, just the arc in. So I'll just make that six millimeters. Save and calculate, and you can see we've got our toolpath there. So pretty simple. It is just defining it with a simple center point of wherever the thread is, whether it's internal or external. And you can see the toolpath is generated mainly on the thread information you provide and the tool definition. In this case, the number of teeth will dictate how much the tool has to travel. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAM, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your questions or your parts via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.